What's up everybody, how's it going and welcome to the Mina channel. Today we're going to be talking about uh, three things that I loved about Persona 5 Strikers and two things I didn't like about it. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, so we're going to start at number one with the gameplay. Honestly, the biggest thing that I loved about this game is how well the game plays. In fact, this is one of my biggest things, like I feel like one of the biggest selling points. Um, funny story enough, when they first announced this, I was very disappointed because uh, I really thought that the gameplay was gonna suck. I don't like the uh, gameplay for the Warriors games or anything like that, so if you're worried about that, 100% don't even worry about it. The game is super good, the gameplay is addictive, it's it's, there's so many combos and combinations that you actually unlock as the game progresses. But at the time of the end, the game, at the end of the game, you are a total badass. There's so many combos, combinations, personas that you can use, different attack patterns, and everything like that. You will definitely be right at home if you are into hack and slash and that kind of stuff. Of games, the game really does justice to the hack and slash genre. It's a really good game. In fact, it became one of my favorite hack and slash games. And I'm pairing up against games like Devil May Cry, Near, uh, Final Fantasy VII the remake. I mean, like it's so good. I really love the gameplay so much. But number, moving up, a number two. It's uh, the uh, proper story and sequel that they made for this game. Honestly, this game took me by surprise because honestly, have you played any of the Warriors games? The Warriors games typically don't really have like a big thing when it comes to like story or anything like that. Uh, some of them do, but some of the things like say like the Fire Emblem Warriors games and that kind of stuff, they're mostly just spin-off games focusing on the Warriors aspects of the game or anything, but this game has a full story. Uh, the story really just moves forward, it feels like a proper sequel to both Persona 5 Strikers, I'm sorry, Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal, whatever you played. It actually doesn't really matter which one you play, the story really just feels like a natural extension of that game. It really if, uh, if you played either of the games, you'll still be right at home. Uh, the game, uh, just story-wise, it's just it it's really feels so proper. There's a good pacing in the story. Characters get motivations, and they kind of grow more as the story progresses and it does feel like the character development from the previous game just kind of moves forward from that. I really actually enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, my number three in here is the characters. Gosh, the new characters and the old characters, they're all so good. Uh, they, it doesn't in any way feel forced, it feels very natural how you get to kind of get to know these characters and kind of the, how they grow together. Um, it's really actually very interesting to see them just kind of get to know each other and kind of form new team members and everything like that. It's honestly fantastic the way they were able to do this. Phenomenal in fact. I, I love Sophie. She's such a good character. Senkichi is also really good. They're both so different kind of characters and honestly their stories themselves because there are stories for them within the game and everything. It's just so good. I actually loved everything that they did for these characters. Not to mention all of the bad guys which every single one of them has a proper interaction with them. You actually get to know about them. There's uh, motivations for it in all of the bad guys. There's like this background for them so you kind of get to know them. There's so many stuff that actually kind of shocked me when it comes to kind of the game and what they did for the game. Honestly, the, the even the or the villains in this game are much better written than the original Persona 5. 100%. They did such a good job with that. Moving up into the next one, which is also my, my hated parts. Now, let me just emphasize this. These are actually super bad things or anything like that. I won't say that these are like the worst things ever or anything. So please don't take it the wrong way. Don't take it like I hated the game or anything like that. This are just kind of neat picks, I guess. The little things that kind of bother me a little bit here and there. Uh, so the number one is that the game is short. <laughs> it's it's uh, now short is in in quotations here. I'm using quotation air quotations because the game is really about 30 to 40 hours long. You can probably drag it to 50 hours if you really try to grind and do additional bosses and everything. But it's not it's not really a lot. Honestly, once you actually get to know the gameplay and everything, you you kind of just crush to the game and everything. Um, so honestly, I wanted maybe like one or two more dungeons. I already knew the length of the game going into, but I 
devoured this game. I think I've finished this game in like four days. The first time that I played the game, it did take me about, about a week or so. But this time around, I just kind of devoured the entire game. And I'm kind of like, man, I really feel like this, this game could have used like one more dungeon. That being said, the pacing is fantastic in the game. So I don't know how that will work out or anything like that. I think the game just knew when to stop. There's some games that don't know when to stop. And they just kind of drag it on and on and on. This game definitely stopped when it needed to. I do appreciate that, but I do at the same time feel like a little bit on the shorter side. I don't know why, but <laughs> definitely a, a, a wonderful game, though. And my last thing, which is kind of like a neat pick and everything, and it's not gonna be a uh, spoiler, but some people don't want to hear about this, so uh, I will talk a little bit about the final boss. No spoilers. Are, again, I just kind of want to say one thing here so if you want to click away now click away now that's fine uh, so final thing is i felt that the final boss or like one of the bosses at the end was really painfully average like it's like the average evil bad guy kind of thing it just didn't feel like as good as every other other uh, evil bad guys that we know in the game so far like they introduced so many evil, evil bad guys and everything like monarchs and everything and the final monarch really de didn't feel like that good it just felt like really average to me so that's one of the things that i just want to say anyway thanks so much for watching this if you're new please consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you guys next time